Great, well, we're recording now, so why don't you, um, why don't you just get going? I'll just do the coffee. I mean, I think we all know, I mean, we have a general sense of what football for water is, but I guess maybe if you could recap kind of, you know, how many partners are involved in it yeah. and sort of what they're using right now, because I think they are using RSR and Flow, yeah. 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 And then, yeah, like Joe said, with the latest. Yeah. 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 Well, so, in, as a sort of, uh, in short, Football for Water is a four year program. Uh, we work in three countries uh, Ghana, Mozambique, and Kenya. Um, in those four years, we would like to facilitate 1,100 schools with drinking water, sanitation facilities, and hygiene training. And the hygiene training is done by role models as football players. So local heroes, local role models will do the hygiene training. So they will train the kids to do uh, hand washing, uh, those kind of things. And uh, I think it's here in Amsterdam, but it's also, let's say, in uh, Nairobi, or if you kick a ball into a school play, all the kids who run to it will love it. Mm. So you have a lot of attention. Um, this is, it started with World Water Day 2012 to launch the program. Uh, we're now, let's say, one and a half year further. Uh, we're working indeed with, let's say, seven partners uh, in the Netherlands. So that's one element, but certainly not the most crucial element, because in every country you have a sort of country head, and they are sort of represented between five and ten, let's say, local organizations, and they do the implementation. Mm. Um, and then there, are, then there are di different thoughts. Uh, so, for example, if UNICEF, CIMAF, Fitens, Fides, Acre for All, they are more responsible for business development. ACFO. ACFO has a sort of a broader role, but they are doing the monitoring evaluation together with ACRFOL. So they are using uh, really simple reporting. So we divided the countries in different regions or districts or counties, and it's also per country, you need to phrase it different. Um, and every region is a project on RSR, but every year they have new year plans. So you have 2012 schools. 2013 schools, so that's for So sometimes we're struggling how to position the schools in, a, in the right way. Uh, so that's how we sort of structure RSR. And it's building up. Yeah, so the number of updates uh, we notice, yeah, we since the beginning of this year, we're working together with an organization that we're doing also with the Washer Alliance, we do more, to have more direct links with local organizations to support them to do updates. So that's that's mm -hmm. crucial crucial part, mm -hmm. and you see that it's also the fun part because now they also at the last two weeks they do they did more blogs than updates, so that's quite strange. And in some kind of way you could also say the blogs are more updates, but in some kind of way they feel feels more natural. Let's say I'm going to make a blog, it's different than an update. Yeah. Uh, but you see that it's 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 starting, and we now also made a sort of a, a sort of a structure that we say every week the country should do an update. So we focus more on when to do what, instead of spontaneously just to see when when you you're feeling that something is happening. Because mostly they're focusing on concrete things. Sometimes what we say the journey is more interesting than the, and then there's a school or then there's mm -hmm. uh, a new wa uh, water facility. Uh, so then that's uh, let's say one element, and. Um, um, the other part is flow, yeah. and that's now also where you see things are coming together. Because in really simple reporting, we you can see the regions, uh, and in flow we do the mapping. Yeah. So last year in 2012, we did in Kenya, we did all the the baseline. So we did all the schools via flow. In 2013, we did a workshop in Ghana to start using flow, and they will do the th 2013 schools. They will use flow. So uh, that will be something nice because if you see on the map, if you look on the map from Flow on the dashboard and you see the 2012 schools, it's amazing. And you see, I think, f I think 65 schools are now mapped via Flow. So if you look on the map on the, the Flow dashboard and you click on them, you see the data. You see uh, mostly there are three things on the picture. Mostly it's a sanitation point. 
and that's mostly the baseline, so that's sometimes quite shocking. Uh, you see the drink water facility, of lack of drink water facility, and you see the football pitch. Uh, because one part is the education, uh, educational part for the, for the kids about hygiene, but the other part is to provide proper uh, football pitches at the schools. So we also have, let's say, 60, 100 pictures of football pitches uh, in Kenya and now starting in Ghana. Later this year we do a workshop in Mozambique and they will start as of 2014 to also use Flow. Okay. Um, so now we are sort of looking at how to integrate the map of really simple reporting together with Flow. Uh, because you're speaking of the same schools or the same regions and see where you can bring those maps uh, together. Uh, and are they using Flow 1.5? Is that the instance that yeah, they have? Yeah. 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 Okay. So in the beginning they used the first version of Flow in Kenya. For the for the first the original baseline. Yeah. 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 And then we did it re we did it a second time yeah. with the new dashboard. Okay. Uh, because in the first point it was 25 schools, so in that kind of way it was easier for us in that moment in time to do it to redo it. Mm -hmm. uh, the 25 schools, then instead of do the whole migration of the old version and the new version. So that's kind of why we did the easy way. That's some kind of way because we needed to visit the schools anyway. And then you see how easy it is to use Flow because if the mobile phone is there, uh, they don't have to, they, they don't bother to do this one more time because it's quite an easy exercise because they had all the data. So that's kind of way they went to the schools and filled in the data one more time and then they mapped it. So that was quite... Uh, so the, the integration of the RSR and Flow, is that kind of new ground being broken here? Yeah, because if, if, uh, if we have a sort of uh, program meeting, to the, this afternoon we have another one and then if you show them uh, so it's still a sort of yeah, our best kept secret the flow map but if you show it to them they say ah we love it we would like to see that this should be the home page this should be the home page of our program that's the flow dashboard um, so there sometimes the struggle is that we are and all the pictures that are in the flow yeah. you should have a sort of a, a photo stream of all the pictures in flow there, so all the partners, they love the content that is in Flow. Yeah. And that's our challenge, is to get the data from Flow into a sort of... But why can they not upload the pictures to RSR whilst they're also put in Flow? Yeah, because mostly they yeah. need to go or to computer, yeah. or so then they need to go to the computer, and let's say the phone to the computer, and then do yeah. the updates per... Because yeah. you're going to do the, the video of the, the photo upload, you're going to do somewhere. Yeah. So then you need to select a picture, mm -hmm. and if they went to 20 schools, they need to deci decide which school, yeah. which update per school. So then it becomes yeah. time consuming, and then it's not priority. And so yeah. that kind of way, Flow helps them to just do yeah. the data, pictures, and then it's, it's, it's out of their plate. Yeah. And if they are back, then they need to think about the story, they need to select the picture, they need to do uh, yeah. all those kind of things. Yeah, it's not automatic. No, mostly if they're in the field, they're lacking the whole day of internet in the office. So if yeah. they're back in the office, then mostly there are alarm bells ringing about different things. Yeah, they have to. So but I suppose the app, the RSR app, would help that to a degree. Yeah, totally. Although they would still have to be then coming out of the app, going into Flow, coming out of Flow, going into this. So it's yeah. still going to be a faff, isn't it? But I it? think it will increase enormously if they can do it on the spot. Yeah. So they can... They can make a picture of the sanitation facility, type something, this is the current situation, this is the baseline, and it has improved or is shocking or a lot of work to do, yeah. or one of our colleagues is working on this this item. Um, I think it will uh, help. Uh, and that's still there are two things, that, that is still, but it's also what we emphasize everywhere, it's a long-term vision to bring all those things together. Uh, I think in the program we are, Related to flow, we are ahead of program. So it was not intended to do flow mapping already in 2012 or 13. And we said it's, it's it's a process, but now because it it, it actually is there, they say uh, we would love to have everything, all the schools, all the countries, everything. So that kind of way, that's positive. But we need to also uh, bring it to manage expectations a little bit. Uh, and one other thing is that we're working together with Agrafol and SNV, and they are helping to do the business development, because the longer term vision of the program is that after four years the program should not stop, 
uh, because you see after one and a half year we have now all the lessons learned are becoming to uh, they're getting uh, in implemented so you can actually say in the say after the third year the program is full speed and then you have to already sort of dismantle almost the program so the longer term vision is that after four years there should be another four years with new schools with ev eventually new uh, countries uh, eventually with new partners uh, so that should be but the philosophy should be the same so the type of monitoring the type of business development and the business development part is to make sure that the program itself is sort of self-sustaining so they learn to produce vegetables or different things that they can sell or that with the drinking water if they produce enough water for a school they can also sell it to the community mm. those kind of business models and SNV is using flow to do base uh, business development surveys so that's the sort of second track in which SNV uses uh, surveys in flow uh, to gather more information about business development mm. so that that are the sort of in general the, let's say the implementation part in total with the 1100 schools we're aiming for 700,000 plus children on the schools and uh, yes. they're I'm sorry, that's within the 1,100 schools yeah. that are part yeah. of the four-year yeah. program now. Yeah. So how, how were those schools chosen in those countries specifically? We had a sort of a per country sort of application form. So together with the partners, they selected uh, schools that were ready for 2012 implementation, that are ready for 2013. And at the moment, we are selecting the 2014 schools. But that are UNICEF schools, that are CIMAVI schools, that are Vitens Evita schools. Um, and then the football parks always brought to the schools. So in that kind of way the WASH uh, partners are leading. Yeah. So and these are secondary, those are secondary schools? Primary. Oh, primary. I never yeah. thought the yeah. children were older. No, primary schools. So if you had to, like... I'm just going to interrupt for a second. Coffee. Um, say looking to the sort of the water and sanitation facilities that is sort of in a, in a positive way is business as usual yeah they're dealing with rural places or urban places with their challenges that they're facing anyway um, but new is where mostly all NGOs are struggling with is the, the hygiene education yeah? so mostly it seems like that there is a small per percentage of the children on the schools that are sort of learning from the hygiene education so that's quite nice if you have the facility in place but if they don't use the soap if they don't uh, make use of so that kind of way a lot of ngos are looking at this program to see okay if the role model type of working uh, helps this could be a new ball game mm. and, and that kind of way um, so, so they would like to use it also. So they're looking and there are a lot of sport development programs 
uh, but this football bit and football as a passion and it's about boys and it's about girls uh, it will be a test case so it's what we honestly also say it's not a proven concept yeah. so in that kind of way it's new mm. but in some kind of way if we see it now the attention it gets from governments uh, from schools uh, I think also from football players themselves yeah. they, they, they like to, to use their asset as being a good football player, as being a good role model, yeah. as being a good coach, uh, it stimulates. Yeah. And is there any thought to whether it actually also raises awareness among children that are not living in those communities but are living in other parts of the world where football is actually also very big? So like, you know, kids here in the Netherlands, like, yeah. is there any element of it where, you know, the program could feasibly at some point you know, raise awareness among kids just because, yeah. you know, outside of yeah. those countries because they're just interested in, yeah. you know, yeah, we're, football we're, and football. Yeah, we're, we're looking at different countries, but we said also this program is four year. We need to focus on the three countries that we're working on. Mm -hmm. uh, we are sort of looking at a sort of a program called club linking, in which you can link schools to, to let's say, football clubs here in the Netherlands. Mm in a way that you can create awareness on the football school, uh, football uh, clubs here in the Netherlands yeah. and potentially also for, let's say, awareness and fundraising. Yeah. Because one element that we haven't touched on yet is a fundraising part. Mm. Um, because there's still a sort of a gap in the program itself. It's a public-private partnership. So the Ministry of Foreign Affairs doubles the private funding. And in some kind of way, one of the objectives was also to raise funds in this program. And it's, it's a sort of partly it's awareness raising, mm -hmm. and the other part is fundraising. And I made it quite specific. There is a gap of five million uh, still lacking. So we are having sessions uh, to see how we can get money from, let's say, business partners, but also from the general public, uh, to see how we can um, how we can raise funds, how we can people let them donate to projects. So what we, from an ACFO point of view, would like to have is the, the right structure to have the 1100 schools in some kind of way visible. So that if you are now would like to donate to the program, you can, see, you can say, I would like to donate to that school in Ghana. Mm. Instead of a general, uh, uh, if, you, if you would pay $25 for a kid in Ghana to have proper drinking water, uh, sanitation and football training, yeah, then, then it will be, okay, you donate 25 bucks and then, and in which country, yeah, we do not know. Mm. Yeah, is it relevant? Yes or no. And nowadays, people would like to know. So therefore we say we have, in that kind of way, we have a sort of infrastructure to make all the schools uh, visible or make them, uh, let's say, transparent where they are. And people can say, I would like to donate to that school, and you can follow the, the progress then. So that's where we're now looking yeah. on the fundraising part. To you have more of a direct link as a donor, yeah. you, you know, yeah. to say where, yeah. or to know where that money yeah. is. Going. And that's for us still a sort of challenge, because in that kind of way, we cannot donate to a sort of a flow school. Uh, because we, we make a sort of RSR project in which you can donate to, but it's a region of schools. Because in some kind of way, it's also a new ball to have a sort of direct link to 1100 schools mm. because I think we cannot expect realistically that 1100 schools will do updates. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's the implementing partner who is responsible for a couple of schools to do updates. Well, and they've done some great ones recently. I mean, we just highlighted, um, I yeah. think, was it Creata? Yeah, Paul Ogado. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's great. Is he with Creata? Yeah. Right? yeah. He's, the, he's the football partner, but well, he's, he's, the, the, he's the unique, he's, he's the football for water person. Mm. Yeah, that we're looking for, yeah, because, because he looks bigger than he's a football uh, sort of a football player, he's also a wash uh, water sanitation player. Mm. But he's done a really good job in terms of especially video, I think, because yeah. you know, I mean, the video, like or initially when Frodo sent me the link, it was like, hey, you know, can you check this out for like the newsletter? Because you are a partner of the month or usually updater uh. of the month, and you know, Frodo mentioned, like, oh, you know, maybe it would be. Good, like if we could do it to have subtitles but the thing is when you watch the video yeah. even though you don't understand the children are putting on a like a sketch basically explaining yeah. kind of the you know benefits of, of you know 
clean water and hygiene and it's like you you watch it and you but you still it, it still comes across yeah, like what, totally, yeah. what is happening yeah. there yeah. so i think they've done a really good job of using video to yeah. like really yeah. you know have nice kind of dynamic updates yeah, totally. the ones that I that they posted recently. So. Yeah, but I think he, I like the sort of the the photos that he makes also from uh, sanitation facilities uh -huh. with quite detailed description about the fact for instance they are still wet, yeah, so they are still in use. But he, he puts emphasis on the on the <coughs> on the wash element and he's a football player, huh? So in that kind of way he, he bridges both both worlds uh -huh. uh, which I like. And indeed, what you're saying, for me, to be honest, I was, I, I've never seen before in that moment in time that we have football for water uniforms. Oh, yeah. Yeah? yeah. And there's a whole competition in which I sort of did not see before. But you have, I think, five, six counties with different colors, with different football for water uh, shirts, and they're playing a competition. Yeah. Those kind of things. Yeah. Uh, so, so far, we have experienced a, a yellow team, an orange team. A blue team, a pink team, and they're all, uh, yeah, so there are so many more stories to get out of. Uh, mm. yeah. I, I, we were talking before about whether video is working as a technique. I was asking Luke yesterday with, with the team yeah. whether the simple video training we do is really leading to anything. Is it, is it worth bothering? Are we doing it wrong? Do we just persevere? Because I don't feel, I feel we kind of refine some very simple techniques yeah. and I hardly see anybody using them. Yeah. And I, I just wonder, should we, is it worth it? Uh, it is, uh, because I think the most valuable- your tea as well. Yeah, thanks. The most valuable are the-, the Take the back out. Yeah, please. The most uh, valuable things are, are always the video updates. Uh, for me, but for me as a person, uh, I, f I find it already more difficult to make a video uh, interview or a video shot. Pictures I can, I think, I mean, if you look around, everybody takes pictures. But to do a video and to do an in-depth video, uh, besides, okay, this is the street where I'm living, uh, to do an interview, it's always a step, a step further. Mm -hmm. And it's also more... Uh, uh, it takes more time, but I think in, in general the basic rules and I think we should maybe emphasize it more I think within football for water it's possible that we say okay once a month you do a video of that but so far It's how better you structure it the better it works yeah, So now we say every week a different country will do a blog and now they're coming Every week a different country with a blog. Yeah, so that, that helps the updates. We're now sort of working the same sort of speed uh, and then I think the next step will be to to guide them more of this could be a better update but first I'm happy that they do an <coughs> update and then the video updates should be a really simple one the training is, is perfect I think it's more to do it more often but it's the same as we do in the office uh, every week one minute update mm -hmm. it slips away mm -hmm. so in that kind of way I think it's not in the program it's I think it sort of to self consciousness for me, it's, it's the same Hearing for this, 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 the, this, yeah. this thing. It makes yeah, no, it is an interview is a nerve-wracking thing for both parties. You know, for the interviewer and the interviewee. Yeah. But then I don't think a simple video needs to be an interview. It can like filming kids doing a skit. It's a cool video. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be sticking wow. a camera in someone's face and, and interviewing yeah. them because that is mm. quite scary. Yeah, but I think in, in sometimes I think mm. Luke is a great example. Mostly he's in a conversation and then he says uh, some questions and then. They're walking uh, yeah. via the, 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 the drinking uh, facility and then they go to the school uh, central place. So he, it's more sort of a journey than it's here. Yeah. Uh, but I, I find it frustrating because I, I, you know, I'm not trained as a professional video person at all. But I just, you know, I think it's just basic interview techniques and how you project yourself yeah. and draw something out of the person. Yeah. And I don't think it's very hard. I think people do it all the time. I think yeah, they're I always asking. It just takes us, uh, you have to get into the mindset. Yeah. You know, you, I think you just do and you just have to get, I mean, sometimes it doesn't, like, sometimes I look back at photos I've taken and I'm like, why didn't I 
like record like it. I went to a bar with some friends in Chicago once and we walked into this really late night bar where there was like just out of nowhere bizarrely a piano in the middle of the room and my friend jumped on the piano he does not know how to play the piano but he started playing this like song that was like the the theme song for a sitcom when we were growing up and it was hilarious and I have a bunch of photos of it but I was like I have I have a, the ability to record video on my camera when I looked back I was like why did we ever record that he was singing and playing music like what does that the photo does not tell me that at all and I think you have to get into these it's yeah. actually only been James that's gotten me more in the mindset of taking video, like with my phone, yeah. just spontaneously yeah. capturing things rather than being like, oh, I'm going to take a photo of this. Yeah. Yeah. There's something I think uh, I sometimes now use for Twitter the, the Vine app, in which you can make the six second video thing. Yeah. And that's already sort of a light version. Eh? It will not capture a story or it's, 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 it's quite hard. But I think it's, it's, it's to do it more often. I think yeah, that's yeah. the whole thing. You should do it sort of daily. Well, we were saying we wish we'd recorded the whole discussion we had this morning that you came in on the end of. Yeah. Because it was a really good discussion, wasn't yeah. it? And, you know, I think it would have interested... I'm a tank, she would have found it interesting. Yeah. yeah. And Katie would have really enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. But at the moment, you can easily... Let's say, if it was nothing, you can delete it. Yeah. And if it was valuable, you can just bring it online yeah. and it's open for everybody. Yeah. But that's I, just filming what's going on, which is different to what you're talking about to you know, filming a filmed interview. Because yeah. like with Football for Water, there's lots of stuff that was cool to catch on video, like kids playing football yeah. or kids learning about hygiene, you know, yeah. that stuff, yeah. you just capture it. Yeah. So that is kind of, uh, that's somehow, I mean, you still have the technical challenges of uploading yeah. stuff and having your camera and all that faff, which, and yeah. then getting it in the right format to get online. And you know, it's, that stuff is still uh, a headache. But the, but the fear of like being an interviewer or being interviewed is yeah. it's not in there. No, but, but I think the, the power of what we did in the, in, in, the, in the sort of photograph session, which I would compliment one more time, because it's amazing. It's, it's about the, the people who are working in the program are the sort of the heroes, huh? and they do the great stuff. And yeah. I think it's the same. Oh, you mean the Ghana photo shoot yeah. you yeah. did? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's compliments it's there. And their newsletter, which is really yeah. cool. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, but everybody loves them. They're, they are so to the point, let's say, about the role of Akvo, but it's, it's about the people. Yeah. It's the people that make it happen. And I think the great thing is about you should find the passion, and it's an easy one to go to the to the football area, but the passion of somebody who installs a sanitation facility, he will have an interesting story of what he's doing, yeah. uh, or what is the current condition. If you interview a teacher about why the school of what why the why the water facility is not functioning, she will have a great story. Well, mm. one of the things that I think is interesting... So we should all have all the three elements, I think. Yeah. Yeah, those photos, the, the, those showcase photos that we're doing, brings up, is it does put the emphasis on the team of people yeah. doing the programmes or doing the yeah. projects. Whereas I think those that team is normally used to putting the emphasis on the kids. Yeah. 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 And us saying, actually, the most important people in this Co in his project, yeah. other people doing the work. Yeah, because they do a good job. Well, because to make it really, because they do a good job, the people are able to play. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Because if the sanitation, uh, education, the hygiene is not done properly, the kids will become sick and they are not able to to join the football thing. And because they will be sick, they feel not feel not well, and they will miss out. So I think if they do a good job, the kids will play. So I've got, I mean, a question really about <clears throat> football fans. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I come from Liverpool, so you know, yeah. um, you know my family are all Liverpool supporters. Yeah. Um, do they really? Do do football fans are football fans really interested in any of this? No, uh, we we did a sort of a, a survey. Is a big word, but we're now looking at certain target audiences for awareness and for fundraising and to see if they are sort of involved or would they are they interested to become more involved and we said okay we can emphasize the lack of sanitation lack of water but i think a lot of organizations are very well in doing that or everybody's sort of tired of that perspective so we've chosen to focus on football so if you like football here you would love to see kids play football in Africa uh, to make it. So that kind of way, if you would say via this program, you are able to let kids play football in their 
environment, I think people will love that. Yeah? Because if you see the images of kids playing around and they will become a sort of new, yeah, maybe eventually they will be in the World Cup. Yeah? One of those kids from those kind of, kind of schools could be potential somebody who will play in a Dutch team yeah, here in the competition or would be the new Drogba or will be the new... Yeah, because it's like, you know, if... So if, 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 you, if you emphasize on that, on the sort of the leadership that you can bring to that schools, that football can be a game changer, mm -hmm. I think the people will love, if, if they need to, 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 to choose between different, let's say, NGOs or different courses, I think they would love to, to help a kid play football and that is via better sanitation. And yeah. But then I think that's the angle... Because you've got to say that, I mean, if... If if everything if you know if we all do our job well and well if the world goes in the direction we we want yeah. it to go, yeah. then in twenty years time, the, the African football championship is just going to be this terrific event, yeah. you know, and full of all yeah all these all these football players and all these people really really being passionate about this. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So then I think I think that's the sort of the angle that we're looking at. It's really to bring the football to the schools. And the football brings a positive change. That's that's where we're now sort of aiming at. And in some kind of way, one element is that there will be three local matches. So old Dutch legends, they will do a, a football match in Ghana. They will do one in Kenya and one in Mozambique, together with the local stars, the local legends. And that should emphasize even more uh, that working together uh, between, let's say, the Netherlands and the different countries about the power of football. And coming Wednesday, for instance, in the it's the friendly game between Portugal and the Netherlands, we will have a sort of two-minute boarding around the field with football for water. And that's the first thing. It's not put them into action, but it's at least something to show the, the name of the program. It will emphasize the website. So in that kind of way... And now we yesterday we had a session about how to activate it. Yeah, so we have all kind of ideas how we can maybe uh, bring things to the football players uh, to the fans. So there could be an auction about the the shirt of Van Persie, or it could be the shoes of, or it could be the the whistle of the referee. Those kind of things. So we're looking at all kind of different elements uh, to bring it closer to the. And if you then say if you make an auction for this shirt, it's for instance 100 bucks, uh, it's the same as four children helping them to have better water and sanitation and hygiene training. So we're looking at those kind of angles to make the, the things that you're seeing closer to... Now, I mean, it's a lot of the programs that we see, um, the, the people that are involved with them have for many years been used to generating negative messages that induces a feeling of guilt a feeling of guilt about the plight of african yeah, kids yeah. you know look at this poor child yeah. give us money yeah. and we will um, make you feel less guilty about it yeah. by doing something good yeah. Yeah. and does i think the and i really think and you know the ngo world is built around yeah i mean joe might argue differently or she might completely agree but the NGO world is built around that process. Yeah, I think we have three sort of as a sort of DNA of the program. It's, it's different, it's isn't playful, it? Playful, let's say playful, goal driven, and let's say down to earth, something like that. So it's more on the play, on the passion, on the positive side, than on oh look at the kids, they are in misery, those kind of things. We try to emphasize the the happiness, the potential power that's all there. Mm -hmm. So there are different words. Uh, but I think that's a different thing to also bring the program alive. But it's a different thing. Yeah. Well, I'll shut up again now. Well, that's good. I think it, that actually brought like, a really nice differentiator for the program. Mm -hmm. And also what you see within, because let's say, for instance, UNICEF, yeah, they are doing this for a long time already. And if you see this sort of, um, and it's still a challenge, sure. Uh, but if you see... I like how, the word challenge. Yeah, that's what. Yes, what Americans often use key challenges. Uh, yeah. What do you mean the problem? Really nice <laughs> yeah. so it's a big issue. It's a big that. issue. Yeah. So what's the big issue? Now that they are open for change, but they are doing things for a really long time. Yeah, so they have just to do their UNICEF implementation, yeah. 
and now we bring something new. And there are two, three things. There is business development to be, become self-sustaining. It's a new type of monitoring to be fully transparent. And it's to do something with football players. And that's besides their regular job. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I noticed more and more in the program that they will become a team. So it's if you, you after let's say after worship of after the first year, you do not know is that a UNICEF person or so that's what I also liked about the photo shoot. Eh? They all wear the same T-shirt, and you do not know if he's from the UNICEF organization or if he's from the football organization. So for instance, Paul, eh, what we were saying about mm -hmm. Creata, mm -hmm. is Creata. If you don't do not know, is that a wash implementer? Or is it a football implementer? Mm -hmm. Is it relevant? No, because if we are looking to the baseline, those kind of things, we always say if you go to school, you do both. So you don't you don't do the baseline for water and sanitation, and the football organization will go for the football baseline. So they learn from each other via the monitoring, which I like. Yeah, so they have one survey with three or four elements. Uh, so the football implementing partner will do the sort of the baseline check also on the uh, the water. Point is it functioning or not? And they do the interview with the school teacher or the person who's responsible for the uh, how do you say that? physical education, so the training of the football uh, PA teacher or so. So I think that's the nice thing that in the program that should be something that should come together. So one thing that I'm wondering about, and I spent time in Kasumu with the football for yeah. water team uh, a few months ago, um, is how willing. They are as a group to be self-critical yeah. and use use the reporting and monitoring tools to uh, to, to do that. I mean, you know, there was um, one person that I was talking to who, you know, she was um, working with Vitens and really concerned about the quality of the toilets that UNICEF is building. Um, because there's a lot of subcontracting that goes yeah. on down the process. Yeah. So, you know, somebody might con contract it from, say, yeah. Nairobi, Nairobi yeah. and then it goes to another, then it goes to another, and then yeah. it goes to another. But but ultimately, I think, you know, organisations like that have not been used to having the quality of their work assessed on an ongoing basis. And yeah. I'm not aware of any standards that are put in place and monitored yeah. in terms of the quality of construction. So is there a risk that with football force, what we're going to do through this process is over time, you know, be showing the progress of a program that builds substandard infrastructure, for example. Uh, yeah. Um, that's, a, that's a question, yeah. Uh, I think this is the first year. So in that kind of way, uh, we have now uh, done the sort of the data and the evaluation of the first year, the 2012 schools. In that kind of way, is, for us, it's possible to do a sort of comparison because we have sort of three implementing partners. So in that kind of way, we can see the quality difference. We can sometimes see the price difference for same or different toilets. Uh, so I think it's, it, it, and you're totally right about how open will they be about. Uh, but in that kind of way, it's, it's, it's up to the country head. And also for, let's say, Acrofall, who mostly are sort of doing the sort of quality checks uh, to be open about it but I think it helps that we have three different organizations for implementing and sometimes indeed you're right those three are subcontracting to one or two and sometimes it's that same organization um. it'd be interesting if we could actually like have a look at the stuff that's on the dashboard yeah. so I think that that stuff is there right but I don't know I feel like there's a lot of stuff that, you know, like I know Katie and Henry have access to that I don't normally like know about or have the links uh, to. The, 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 fun, the, fun, the fun bit is, that was also sort of, the, the dashboard is open. So yeah. if you type in the football, football for water .org, you come into the dashboard of the three countries. And uh, it starts with Ghana because it's, it's on order. So uh, it's ACVO app. So, it's, so that's running for the ACVO app site. So no, sorry, is it, well. sorry, is it football for water <laughs> dot... What is the... Uh, football for water dot NL, isn't it? No, 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 but uh, you can oh, is directly another... the, the dashboard. Yeah, we need to sort this kind of stuff out, well, so well, if well, we can't remember the, where they are. <laughs> I think that a lot of times, I mean, that's there's cool. stuff available around ACVO that 
would be so useful for us. But I think everyone kind of thinks we know where it lives, but yeah. we don't. We don't really. So I've well, still we'll, yet we'll to see any uh, flow I dashboard. I've never seen a flow dashboard. That's I really cool. If, if you I if you would like to do sort of a live live presentation. Yeah. Maybe we can have a couple of minutes and then yeah. I can show you around a little bit. But if you if you have sort of time and we would like to maybe have it today or tomorrow that we have a tab on the home page which says schools. Mm. You click on schools, you have a sort of general information about the three countries and schools, the numbers. And then we have a sort of a screenshot about the flow dashboard in which you can click on and you go into the dashboard. Yeah, see, that's public and dashboard. To, yeah, that's, that's, I think we should definitely... And if you go into a Kenya, if Ghana has some, let's say, maybe 10 points, but if you go to Kenya, it has 60 points. And if you click on every point, you have maybe one, two or three pictures. Mm -hmm. So there are, let's say, maybe 100, 150, 200 pictures mm -hmm. available in the Football for Water program. Yeah. They're there, and they're mostly amazing. Uh, so in that kind of way, the, the the power that's in the dashboard, and that's also what, what I said, if we have a sort of program groups and I just show them online, we have some new schools mm -hmm. mapped via Flow, everybody loves it. Yeah. But it's still sort of a secret. So now we have yeah. chosen to at least put the link online, but then that kind of way you go to the dashboard. And the dashboard is not ready to, it's always the same URL, which I forgot. Um, so you cannot click into this sort of, if you click to the to a, a specific school, you always have the, the central map. But I think that's something, uh, maybe a couple of months or so, that will that will become. But I think the, the, the potential and the power is really, it's really there. So Fredo, we've just got, I've got about six minutes of yeah. video left here. Um, and I, I just, I wanted everybody to just ask Fredo, something that I, I mean I, i'd like to ask you about just for a minute i get a minute <laughs> we try you know let's assume for a minute that aclo fails over the next five years why do you think it would fail what would be the reasons why it would fail um yeah, um, I'm asking the most positive guy in the world to say something negative. Yeah, so I was all, all <laughs> I had already sort of a solution for that. <laughs> um, yeah, what are the risks? What are the? Well, I, th I think one of the risks, and that's, let's say, looking at, for instance, looking at Flow, is that we need to work with partnerships uh, because I think they they will use Flow. Yeah, so far, it's. It's, it's widely adapted. Uh, looking at Kenya, uh, the 60 schools are mapped, all the data is there. But in some kind of way, then the work starts. Flow is a tool. Uh, so one organization needs to make the survey, and then Flow comes in. And then if all the data is in Flow, then somebody needs to analyze the data. And if that data has not been analyzed correctly, or some if they do not do the right proper analysis with the data, it will kick back to Flow. Because then Flow did not work. Yeah. So, okay, we have done a survey via Flow, so what's the outcome? Yeah, you have to do it yourself now. So that's something that's... Yeah, I think, I think Kasim and I realized, so the, the technology is such a tiny portion of the skill involved in doing good monitoring and good surveys. Yeah. And you know, trying to follow people doing, dealing with an unstructured interview with a head teacher in a school in a slum, the, an amazing guy, That's and they're trying to follow a structured interview in Flow, and the skill of a couple of people in there to manage to handle yeah. it was it, really it, it, impressive. It will, it will improve, and it improves already because it's an app. But uh, if you need to do a survey with hundred plus questions, uh, it's it's again a challenge. Hundred plus questions. And that's. To do the to do the survey, but then then if you have to do a sort of recap of fifty schools times hundred questions, it will take some time. Mm. Say something else. Okay, so I'll ask you a more positive leaning question. <laughs> so we've been talking lately about the concept of, um, especially if what we're doing does work, yeah. like what we're doing now does work, then yeah. it just kind of follows that in five years' time we need to be evolved and doing something different. So, what do you think that we'll be doing in five years? Um, I think um, 
I think if we can make really the connection, uh, because in some kind of way we do not make the connection to the schools itself. So if they are able to do feedback, I think if they are able to do more, if they can, I think sometimes still the challenge is that the schools itself will see their own updates. So I think the, the power of the success of the things that we're doing, it should eventually be that the schools will see what's happening there or in different schools. I think there the, the, the big potential or the power will be. So it's like school TV for football for water, so yeah, they, can that, watch, they can watch their own stuff. Yeah, I think that that will be sort of amazing. It's, in, in, that's, that's it's really true, actually. Kids really, I noticed this at World World Water Day, they were all kids filmed, and kids just like looking at videos of them and their class together, and going, oh, I would, there's me, there's yeah, you, there's yeah. you, there's you. Yeah. And can you imagine if you do that in the context of Mozambique? Yeah. They, they will love to see themselves for the first time, maybe. And if you see that, and they they know from different schools around them, and they will have the feeling. I think that's that's. Yeah. I think that's if we can can provide the loop, yeah, the whole loop that they can be part of the process. Mm. I think that's because now we 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 make the implementing partners uh, part of the progress. Mm -hmm. So it's three countries now. Yeah. How many over the next? Five years. Is it going to stay there, or is it going to go like worldwide football conquers the world? Uh, that would be, let's say, my sort of passion uh, to to bring it to, let's say, uh, other countries in Africa. So we have conversations about, let's say, with UNICEF, let's say, for Liberia in in programs that we're working with. I think the football element could be really interesting. We have so there are lo there's lots of lots of interest. But one of the things that we're now looking at, it's not ready to scale yet. Mm. Yeah, so the philosophy is there, so the interest is there. And I think what we need to prove in the coming, let's say, two and a half years, it, that, that it is a solid case, it's a scalable case, in which you can say, okay, you have this country, we monitor, we have a good survey, it's ready, uh, this is the, the part to be implemented, we, look for the, we are looking for the following implementing partners, and then it's ready. So this should be, for me, something as a sort of, the four-year program should be the start of of more. And then it's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. My question is about ACVA, which is also growing and expanding now yeah. quite quickly. So, if you had to kind of like pinpoint something that is, or several things perhaps, that is the essence of ACVA, that should be something that is spread and preserved as ACVA grows, not something that's not lost in the growth, the rapid growth. Yeah. What would you kind of, what would you point to as like? This is uh, for me, the most important thing will be, uh, I think, still the integration, yeah? uh, because we're growing in different tools that we're having, and I think the the integration is is, is key. Integration of products. Yeah. So uh, let's say football for water is using uh, Aquapedia. It's somewhere, so you can see the life skills. Yeah? So it's in the website. We're using Flow. We have a great dashboard. Uh, let's say for with 80 schools now mapped. Um, we have I think 20 regions or 15 regions via RSR with updates. Uh, and now we would like to see the the overall picture. I think that's really uh, cool, and amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you. You should all. We should all thank you. For thank, you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're about out of time. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Pete.